Here comes Kendra. Let's pray. Father, we just bless you, Jesus. Glorify you. We magnify you. You are good. You are worthy. Hallelujah to your name, God. We lift you on high this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, God. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift you on high, Lord. We are so excited this morning to just gather together to worship you, to glorify you, Lord God. We're so excited to hear a new and fresh word from you. We're here, Lord with open hearts, Lord God, ready for what you have to give, ready for what you're about to pour in. We surrender this, this time, this space onto you. We give you full reign. We pray that you fill the mouth of the apostle, fill the mouth of the prophetess. Bless Kendra as she ministers onto us. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Kendra, you have the floor. You're muted, Kendra. Everyone, this is Kendra. Hi, good morning, glory to God. So glad to be here with you all. Uh, I'm just going to sing and I just pray that you just join in with me as I sing. Um, what's on my heart is our God is greater. There's no other God like our God. So God, we just thank you so much, Father, for what you're doing in our lives, Father. We lift you up. We lift you on high, Hallelujah. Lord. And we glorify you, Jesus. We Lord say you are God. the worthy one. There's no one else like you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power, our God, our God. Oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger, and God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. And none like you. And into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Come on and sing it with me. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. And God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power. Our God. Our God, one more time, our God is greater, our God is stronger, and God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. I love this part, it says, and if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then Then what could stand against? And our God is greater. Yes. Our God is stronger. God, you are my Our 
God is healer, awesome and power. Our God, our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. By your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your all-living hope and your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. I love you. Come on and sing it with us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, by your presence, Lord. Thank you. One more time. Thank you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. We invite your Holy Spirit. We invite your Holy Spirit. Yes, come on. We invite your Holy Spirit. We invite your Holy Spirit. Uh, get yourselves off of your, or you get your eyes off of yourself. Set your eyes on things above, not the world. Set your affections on Him this morning. Oh, Rababaka Randa Rabasi. We invite your Holy Spirit. Yes, touch the Lord. Invite your Holy Spirit. Yes. We invite your Holy Spirit. Come, come, come. 
To have your way, to take your place at the center of our hearts, at the center of our minds. Oh, have your way. Come and take your place at the center of our hearts, at the center of our minds. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Come, come, come. Can you hear that again? Come, come, come. come. Yes. Come, come, come. Yes. Come, come, come. Yes. Come, come, come. Yes. Come, come, come. The spirit and the bride say, come, come, come. Come, come, come. The spirit and the bride say, come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. As the Lord is asking us to come. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Opening to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just bless you. Mm. His presence is here. His presence is where you are. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sweet presence, God. We acknowledge your Holy Spirit here. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you that you 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 live to just be with us. You long to just be near to us, God. Father, give us that same hunger. Give us that same thirst, that same desire, Lord God, to love on you, Jesus, just as you love us, Lord God, with an everlasting love, Father. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit is near. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is close to us, oh God. So Lord, we just say, come. We say, come. We say, have all of us, Lord. We surrender ourselves to you. We surrender our hearts, our our minds, our spirit, whatever happened before, whatever happened at the beginning of this morning, at the beginning of this day, Lord, we lay it at your feet, God, and we cast our cares at your feet, Father, and we say, Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, teach. Holy Spirit, preach in whatever capacity. Lord God, open up our spiritual ears. Open up our minds to receive you and to hear from you today, God. I pray that you would speak through the man of God. You would speak through the woman of God. That their, that their voice, Lord God, would, would be used for your glory, God. That your spirit, that your word would cut like a two-edged sword. And Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this day. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Would you complete the good work that you started Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Before Jesus. Before we go any further, uh, Kendra, when you mute your mic for a second, I can hear the Lord calling us as well as telling us to come. So today, as we sit before his word and we sit in his presence, I can hear the Lord saying, come. That word come is like he's calling us. And then our hearts are pouring out to touch him. As we touch him, I can hear my heart saying, Lord, I desire to touch you. I can hear my heart saying, Lord, I desire to hold you. I desire to be where you are. Lord God, I'm touching you now. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing in the spirit. I'm touching you, Lord. Let me feel your desire. Let me feel, oh God, let me be the infilling of your desire. Let me be the infilling of your pleasure. Let me be the infilling of your joy. Speak to my heart, Lord, that I can fulfill your pleasure today, not tomorrow, not years down the road, forgetting what's behind us, but today, Lord, even this second, 
make things plain to me as we have an encounter together. So we believe we're going to have an encounter with the Lord and, and we're going to see the hand of God move mightily. Glory to God in our hearts. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Sing. Glory. To God. Come on, Kendra. We want some more of that. Hallelujah. We want to touch God some more Thank as he you. touches us. Glory to Thank God. You. Hallelujah. The spirit and the bride say, come, Hallelujah. come, 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 oh, come, 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 the spirit and the bride say, come, come, come. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, by your presence, Lord. Oh, come, come, come. Hallelujah. Come, come, come. Abdicate. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Ramel, we can't hear you. Hallelujah. Can you hear me now? Thank you, Lord. Can you hear me now? Can't hear me. Hold on one second. You can hear me now? All right. Hallelujah. Can you hear me now? Can you still hear me? Praise God. Praise God. Before we pass it off to the fashions, um, I, I hear God saying, uh, in this time of worship, when we ask God to come down. We ask God to visit us. And I, I want us to tell him how much we love him. Let's just for one second tell God how much we love him, how much we appreciate him. Let's, let's try to overwhelm God with our praises. Let's try, let's attempt to overwhelm God with our praises this morning. And let's just tell him how much we love him. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, God. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you so much, God. Hallelujah. We love you so much, God. Hallelujah. We love you so much. Love you, Lord, oh, we are yeah. nothing without you. We love you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. With you. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we love you so much, God. We love you, we love you, Lord. Yes, God, help us to pour ourselves out to you, God. We love you so much, God. We love you so much. Hallelujah. We love you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love God. We love God. We love you, Lord. 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 We love Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, God. We love you, God. We 
Rabasi. We love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Koramate. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rabas Koramate. Yeah, 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 yeah. We love you with our heart. We love you with our tongue. Hallelujah. Mando Rabas Kenderia Basi. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Have you ever, have you ever begun to praise God and just start forgetting about all your problems? Have you ever been able, have you ever started praising God and telling God how much you love him and forget about all the turmoil in your life and all the things that are going on in your life and all the problems and all and all what he say she say have you ever begin to start praising God and just forget about those things and those things don't even matter anymore and those things don't hold no weight in your life have you ever started praising God and just started and just started believing him for what he's going to do in your life and not worrying about what is what is being done in your life right now I, I dare you to just start praising God and start to forget about those things that is going on in your life. Just, just put God before those things in your life. He said, seek ye first. God is a God of order, and he wants us to put him before the things that we are putting before him now, our problems and our worries. And I pray, I pray that you would just put God before those things in your life through your praise and through your worship. Through your praise and through your worship, that's how you put God before those things that overwhelm you in your life. And that's what God is calling us to do today, He's calling us to praise through and praise him in front. Praise God in front. My God, my God, my God. We are going to be blessed today. I know we're going to be blessed today because this is a man and woman of God, number one. Number two, whenever I get on the phone with them for just regular conversation, I'm blessed. Just in regular conversation, they bless me so much. They give me so much insight and revelation and, and, they, and they drop gems on it and they don't even know they're dropping gems on me. And I, they just bless me so much. So I know that we're going to be blessed today. I hope you have a, get a, have a comfortable seat. Hopefully you got some running sneakers on because you might have to get up and run somewhere um, with the word of God that is be, get ready to come forward. I just want to introduce to some um, and reintroduce to some uh, the Fashors, because they come as a package deal. Amen. The Fashors, I'm going to introduce them. Let's give God a glory hand clap or whatever for them. The sound of the Lord. I can hear the sound, the sound of the Lord. I can hear the sound, the sound of the Lord. They call it sound, sound, sound. Yes, the sound of the Lord. They call it sound, sound, sound. Yes, the sound of the Lord. Yes, I can hear the sound, the sound of the Lord. Yes. I can hear the sound, the sound of the Lord. Hearing the sound of the Lord is like hearing the voice of God. When you can recognize the sound, you can recognize the rhythm, you can recognize the flow, you. you can recognize the love of God flowing in you. Just like we're saying, Lord, come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. There's two comes. There's a come that we call, and there's a come that the Lord calls. And the Lord is calling us, and the Lord is saying to us this morning to come up, to come higher, to come into a place of sensitiveness, to come into a place of meekness, to come in a place of wholeness. The Lord says, as you come to him, he will remove the heavy burden. He will remove the heavy weight. The Lord says, as you come to him in faith, in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind. Mm. He will breathe on you and you will walk in the sound of heaven. You will walk in the sound of his spirit. You'll walk in the sound of his glory. I hear the sound. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. There's a sound. Glory to God. Well, we are coming to you, can I tell you, live. <laughs> We're coming to you live, not pre-recorded or anything of that nature. We are live. It's right off, hallelujah, the throne room of God. We're coming out of the heart of God. We're yielding to the precious one, Holy Spirit, who's going to amplify Christ here. Everything that we do today and for, for now on will be to please our Father, to please God, and do an advantage in life now. Thank you. You have a partner with you. The angels with you. Turn to the angel to your right, to your left, behind you, and say, I'm so glad you have decided to partner with, with God I'm and so myself. And glory to, to God. God and I'm myself. so glad you're I'm on so my team. On you, my team. I'm not looking for no battles lost. No, hallelujah. The war is already victorious. We win. Tell the angels, we are we win. We win. We win. We win. Let the angels we know. Win. Don't worry about we win. don't worry about friends. Don't worry about the economy. Don't worry about what's going on. Just tell the angels we, we win. win. Glory to yes. God, and we will determine by the words we speak. Well, I want to give you a hint today, and the hint I'm going to give you is we we really want to talk about the anointing of Elijah, and that anointing of Elijah, and then we're going to talk a little. We're going to start out and give you a backdrop of dealing with the what is that called? The Moabites. Yes. It sounds just like that. The Moabites. The Moabites who like to bite. <laughs> Amen. You know, when you're always finding someone bite biting, you find someone just biting at every look, every nick picking thing. One of the things that is going on today is that the spirit of the Moabite is coming to contest with the spirit of of the anointing, the Elijah's anointing that is to come upon us. And a lot of times, what men and women of God are facing facing at times, there's men any reason things have come about everyone uh, so connected to their opinion and what they like and what they feel and they get caught up so much their feelings become an idol and that's that more by spirit that's that more by attitude but God has promised us God has spoken to us and God has said he's going to return the spirit of Elijah unto us I want to share this with you and I'm going to release prophetess because she has some pertinent information and, and revelation and insight that you need to begin take your pen out I'm sorry for those you are driving please we apologize we didn't know glory to God we would have had an angel and tell him to sit there and write for you but guess what <laughs> hallelujah we're going to allow it to be imparted into your spirit hallelujah. glory to God the, the anointed word to you today the prophetic rhema word the bible says we're to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god the rhema of god so i need you to open your spirit so you can hear the rhema you may not be able to remember everything but you will hear the rhema of what god is going to speak to you hear the sound of god and so what i'm saying to you today we're getting ready to release prophetess and she's going to share her portion and i'm going to bring my portion and tie this in and we're going to enjoy the word of god but those of you who can write you i'm telling you you better take notes we're gonna have the word for you today we're bringing the scripture to you today and let the word preach to our hearts god bless you amen amen thank you apostle today we're talking about the elijah anointing the father's the father's heart being turned back to the children according to malachi chapter 4 verses 5 through 6 mm -hmm. glory to god but first of all as we recall in the new testament in luke chapter 15 verses 11 through 32 luke what chapter 15 verses 11 through 32 write it down it talks about the prodigal son the father who just absolutely adored his children My gave God. his son after his son asked mm -hmm. he said that his son asked for his inheritance yes and the father did just that hallelujah mm -hmm. he answered his son's request to give him in his inheritance as the younger son requests betrayed oh his betrayed his rebellious manner and waiting to live independently yeah. and as apostle said moab today moab moab means what father and we think about moab meaning what father uh being as i was i grew up without my i grew up without my father in the household and the first thing i used to say is you're not my daddy Woo! <laughs> so the moabites are fatherless people hallelujah so the first thing what will come to your mind 
is that you're not my daddy. You're not my daddy. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. Sounds like a spirit that's roaming around in this world today that we have to war against. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, and if we take a look at 2 Samuel chapter 8, verses mm. 1 through 15, it's going to talk about Mo mm. Moab. Mm. The, it says in the scripture, beginning at verse 2, then he defeated Moab, wow. forcing them down to the ground. He measured them off with a line. With two lines, he measured off those to be put to death, mm. and with a full, with one full line, those to be kept alive. My so God. the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. A Moabite is a lack of accountability. Yes. My children had to be accountable to me. And guess what? I'm still their mommy. They're 27 and 33. They need to be accountable to me because when I rise up at night and the dreams aren't good, I hit the floor praying. When I rise up in the morning and the dreams are good, I still hit, hit the, the floor, floor play, praying. And if I want to call them and say, what's your agenda for the, today? They need to tell me something. Ooh. I need to know that they're well and they have a good day playing. Um, we're talking about Moabites now. Remember it means what father? What Hallelujah. Father? What father? Meaning, Lack of meaning, ability. Meaning that they will take time to say, what father? I don't have a father. So it meaning that they're like headless. You're not my daddy. You're not my daddy. <laughs> you don't have no authority over me. Hello. Yes. Uh -uh. Listen, I want you to know I respect you. I reverence you and all of that. But listen, hey, don't push. Don't push the key now. Don't 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 get it wrong here. I you understand see? God connected us, but. Just hold on one minute. You don't have to monitor. All right. I want y'all to remember that. Remember that. What father? Go Keeping ahead. in mind that the prodigal son wanted a future without his father. He Woo! wanted all he had. He wanted his independence from dad. That's rich. There is, there is mentally... There is a mentality that describes independence from the apostolic resource Ooh. even now that's relating it to the body of christ the fivefold ministry the apostle is the head of the fivefold ministry and proverbs 8 and 1 the scripture reads a man who isolate himself seeks his own desires he rages against all wise judgment write it down a fool despises wisdom okay uh, a fool despises uh, a wise advice godly counsel mm -hmm. uh and according to second kings three and tw three 26 and 27 we're gonna look here that a uh, more moab was born after lots disconnect from abraham mm. it reads in three second kings three 26 and 27 and when the king of moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him he took he took with him 700 men. Slow down. Because uh, I need swords. them to hear this. Watch this. He took Pay with him. Everybody. He took with him 700 men. 700. Who drew swords. Trained men. To break through Ooh. to the king of Edom. Uh -huh. Watch but this. But they could not. But they could not. Then he took his eldest son, mm -hmm. who would have reigned in his place, and offered him a burnt offering now you got to recognize king moab had the same mentality what father moab himself was headless uh -huh. <laughs> wouldn't submit himself to no type of authority no type of guidance no type of teaching he didn't want to have anything other than what he had in his mind and his thought and his way of doing things and so prophet is is re really releasing this but i want to grind it in i want to part i want you to begin to uh, i want to narrate this a little bit so you can see it this is so simple now remember how she read that right she said mm -hmm. and when the king of who moab saw the battle was too fierce for him he took with him 700 men mm -hmm. who drew what swords, swords trained soldiers warriors to break through to the king of edom but they could not why i wonder why so i want you to remember that put a question mark there then he says then he took his what eldest what son, son and mm -hmm. did what uh -huh. He took his other son who would have what? Rain, Rain in, his, in place. his place and offered him as a what? Burnt offering. The fatherless don't care. They don't have a heart. They don't have a passion. They will do whatever it takes for their own self. 
Mm. Self-centered. Remember that? Yes. But what, do you understand when he says he took his own son? Prophet is going to explain that some more in a second here. Go ahead, please. Ooh. <laughs> oh, a burnt offering upon the wall. Mm -hmm. And there was a great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. Wow. Moab was just as his name meant. What father? Rebellious, want all he can do, mm -hmm. all for his self, self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. This generation is fathered by mm -hmm. social media, TV, radio which is now podcast come on hallelujah they're fathered and mothered by everything around them technology. but the parents the anointing of the parents in the home technology itself independent spirit that despises leadership i can do this all by myself i listened to something this morning Ooh. that was kind of heartbreaking to hear how a man of god lost his place just because he was upset with his 30 two or 33 year old and it was really I really felt for him with my heart yes. where there is no father son relationship sure. the curse is active so we have to think about if there's not a father son relationship uh -huh. in the household right. in the ministry yes. in the church uh -huh. hallelujah the curse is active Ooh, that means the door is open the door is open Ooh. because think about our own lives our vertical relationship do ah. is there a father mm. son daughter relationship with the father god of glory mm. el shall die my god glory to god when mm. there isn't we know that a curse is active so therefore that's how we look at it we look at it we have this relationship mm -hmm. with the lord mm -hmm. it should be the same relationship father son um biologically and in the household of faith as well let's explain the curse when you when you hear the curse is active listen all that that simply means is this when God's hand will rest upon you and be able to protect you, mm -hmm. but because of your heart and because of your rebellious ways, or you have decided to be offended, you decided to be just upset and you're no longer one desiring to connect with who God has connected you with, guess what happens? The hand is lifted and mm -hmm. God, and guess what? God has to stay to suspended until the yoke is destroyed. The yoke of your oneness, the more bite. Uh, who's my listen? Nobody don't tell me what to do. Nobody. And guess what? All we doing is echoing the voice of God. He said, "Man should not live by word alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God." So when God raise up sons and daughters, and raise up leaders, uh, mm -hmm. and raise up work and ministry, so that He can conquer and so that the earth can be filled with righteousness. Guess what? Now the sons and those who have detached themselves say, hey, "You ain't my dad. I can do when I want to. Come to church when I want to. Play when I want to. Harmonize when I want to. Whatever I want to do." listen you listen you might as well just wait until i get there because i don't feel like coming right now when you have all that kind of attitude and that kind of stuff so when god hand is upon you the yes. curse now when you take that attitude the curse is that god has to lift his hand mm -hmm. and watch you from afar Jesus. that means the covering is gone the curse is not to have a, the covering the covering is the glory yes do you do that make sense the that, makes sense. that makes so sense so the curse is active so you have to what break the curse by submitting hallelujah yes. to to the spirit of god the heart of god Thank i'm not you. talking about serving man i'm talking about serving the spirit of God. Okay. We'll make it a little plainer okay. a little later, but for the sake of time, I'm I'm cheating in here while I can. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Math Malachi 4, 5, and 6 uh -huh. reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Now this one again. Before good. the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. Verse 6. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children mm -hmm. and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Least I come and strike the earth with a curse. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we have to get the relationships back. Ooh. Glory to God. We must seek out our relationships for the king, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And don't try to work alone. Hallelujah. You know, but work in oneness. Work in oneness. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me. And before you can get the vertical, you have to get the horizontal. Amen. See, the vertical is when we 
oh, I serve God, I love God, and, and I'm going to do everything God asked me to do. But then horizontal is when we deal with one another, when we're to submit and we're to connect and we're to assist and we're to link together with one another. Do you not know the, go ahead. That's prophet. why the scripture gonna... says, love thy neighbor as thyself. We have to love one another. Ooh. We don't want to get before the father and, and he say, Lord, Lord, I don't, I don't know them. Wow. <laughs> Did you catch that? And so now when we are, hor the horizontal of our life is, is the foundation of the standing of the cross in our life. Do you see it now? Yes. Prophets, put your other hand right cross over there. Can you loop around? There it is right there. That's the cross horizontal. And so we have to walk in this every day. Mm. Our vertical been, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. And we look at a friend, oh, I can't stand him. Oh, that man of God, I don't like the way he talked. I don't like what he's saying. Oh, he's not my He's not my leader. I tell you what, I'm just going here because, you know, I like the young lady in the next seat over there. Mm. Oh, I think I can get a hookup around here. Oh, maybe I want to see what they can do for me. But as long as they understand, I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I do what I want when I want to. Listen, that's not that's not the puzzle. That is not the anointing. That is Thank the curse. Know. That's what causes the more bites. They always say, who's my dad? What? I'm so you don't tell me. The moment you try to correct or instruct and help them, they have the attitude. And if they can't listen, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to bring excellent news because mm -hmm. this is not bad news. This is excellent excellent. news. Yes. Good news for all of us because before we wrap this up today, we're going to see the heart of God. One of the things we have to understand is this. Uh, when she read the scripture and she went right through it so smoothly, but I want to back it up and talk about it a little bit. And it says, God said, I will send Elijah. Elijah. Why Elijah? Elijah was so jealous for the things of God. Mm -hmm. Elijah began to say, because of how your behavior and how you're not seeking the face of God. Guess what Elijah did? God didn't do it. Elijah did it. Elijah prayed for it not to rain. Mm -hmm. It didn't rain for three years and six months yes. because Elijah saw where they were functioning like Moabites mm -hmm. as though they don't, they don't have the yes. spirit of God. They don't have the mind of God. They don't have the desire of the Lord. They didn't have a way to move close into God and, and make sure that God was the center of every decision. Write that down. Write God it down. When God is not the center of every decision, you are no longer connecting to him. You are no longer moving in. You want to know what the connecting is? It means you no longer fear the spirit of God. You no longer fear him. Something else has taken place. You want to know what was happening with the Moabites? They were full of pride. Mm. <laughs> Moabite. Moabite means to be so proudful that you can't smell yourself. That's just my paraphrasing. I'm sorry. You know, I don't mean to come with rough words and all that because I, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but you don't, you can't smell yourself. Everything about you is good. It's excellent. You don't have to be partner up with no one. You don't have to connect to anybody. You can handle it yourself and you become isolated and you, you come, you become your own anointing. You become your own specialty. You become your own song. You become your own praise. Everything about independent you. Independent of you, others. You just mm -hmm. independent of everybody else. I don't need nobody. I know Jesus myself. Can I tell you something? Jesus said, how can you love me if you can't love one another? Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. says, listen, before you come to love me, make sure you love your brother or your sister. And you have to love what God connects you to. We're going to wrap this up in a few seconds. Come on, prophetess. I want to release her a little bit. because, According uh -oh. to Zephaniah 2 and 15, the scripture reads, this is I the rejoicing it. city that dwells securely. Woo. That said in her heart, uh -huh. I am it. Wow. And there is none besides me. Listen to this. Oh, mm -hmm. how has she become a, a desolation, yes. a place of for beasts beast? to lie down? Come on. Everyone who passes by, by her shall, hisses, shall hiss and, and shake his, his fist. fist. Why God. is that? Why is that? That's huh? because they consider she the, she didn't consider the benefits of the relationship didn't consider the benefits of the relationship mm -hmm. also did not understand listen to me close now did not understand how god has brought us together and there's always a head always they're always ahead the head is christ 
Christ is the head of the body of Christ. He's the head. And guess what? We must begin to give our hearts to the ways of Christ, not the ways of men, not the ways of women, not the ways of the system or religious circles and things, but it's to the ways of Christ. And any time you begin to walk into the ways of Christ, the ways of Christ, you want to know what it introduces you to? Synergy, mm -hmm. where each of you will begin to synergize no matter what. You may not agree with uh, uh, one another, but you know how to be agreeable. You know how to understand, okay, I understand your point. I understand your point of view. I understand your difference in this thought. I understand your difference in this matter. So it doesn't mean that we have to what become enemies. It doesn't mean we have to become, we have to become what speechless to one another. Mm -hmm. We have to become indifferent and cold. Oh, you know, I like red, but I like maroon. Oh, maroon. Oh, you like maroon. Just get over there to the, we've been trained that way. We've been trained. We've been taught. If someone uh, doesn't think like you or someone has something opposite and when it, it won't make a difference which way it goes. So now someone has to have a because that's the spirit of a Moabite spirit. Mm -hmm. Listen, Moabite is so self-centered, selfish. Can I just talk just a little bit more? A little Cause bit more, just, yes. I only have a little bit more. Prophet said just a little bit more. And she, okay. when she dropped her head, guess what? I know what she's saying, honey. Don't go too far. I hear you. Thank you. Okay. And so, so what happens is now the sensitiveness of, and the sound of heaven moving in the love of God and moving with the spirit of God is no longer there. Now we begin to move in our own what? Strength. You remember? Okay. Let me show it to you. Back it up, honey. Would you back it up? And let's read about what did King Moabite did? King Moabite, you know what he did? Hallelujah. We read it earlier. He took his son mm -hmm. and offered his son as an offering. So Moabite, it means burnt to offering. a burnt oh, offering, wow. to be headless. And the only thing that you can depend on, uh -huh, are you ready? Witchcraft or sorcery. You mm -hmm. begin to work in the flesh. You begin to do things that now you say, well, if I offer the blood of my son, this, listen, in other words, we can become so headless that we become heartless. Mm, thank you. When we decide that we're not going to yield to anyone, in order to do that, you have to become a heartless person. Mm, I want to stop right there. Mm, I want you to just think for a moment. You, let's just go. Let's go inside. I want you to okay. think for a moment where times you have become heartless yeah. over situations and, and, and issues. And, and why did you become heartless? Was it because someone didn't agree with you? Was it because someone did, uh, uh, you have uh, precon uh, uh, preconceived ideas and thoughts, how individuals, how they would respond to you and things they would say. And you, you thought they would at least, that they would at least open the door for you. And they walk right in and slam the door right in your face as though you didn't exist. I brought that analogy just to make it simple. It can be something as simple as they wouldn't even look my way, wouldn't even speak. Mm -hmm. And we become very cold. We become very hard inside. We become indifferent. We train ourselves not to love. You ever been uh, with those individuals that God is drawing your heart to them, but because they said something that wasn't pleasing to you, you deliberately kept your love from flowing to them? That's called a Moabite spirit, a heartless spirit. Why are you saying, how can you say this man of God? Because Christ is the head of your life and Christ's spirit of love is reaching through you to other individuals and you purposely cut that love off. You purposely won't re release because you feel as though if you release love and show any kind of concern or that they win. You don't win, they win. I'm not saying anything till they say something to me. They don't say nothing to me. Huh. That's called pride. That's called pride. And, 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 and that pride, it hides itself because now pride always tell you this. Are you ready? You are entitled not to speak because of their behavior. Can I get delivered? Can I get delivered? This is that Moabite. This is what God is fighting against. We can go deeper into this, but I'm going to pull back because I can sense Holy Spirit talking to us individually. I can hear the sound. Uh -huh. A lot of times we're wondering why we're not able to. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you Jesus. We're able to accelerate in the things of God, accelerate in miracle signs and wonders as we should. Thank you. Uh -huh. We become untouchable 
oh, I don't need no one to talk to me about. Uh, I don't need that. I'm already, no, he's not my leader, so-and-so. And, but out of just total disrespect, it doesn't matter. I have other things to do. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So we have to slow down and find out what we're really doing. And we have to hear the voice of God. We're going to stop right here. And I'm going to allow prophetess to share and close us and that she can release what she so desire. But I want to say this to you. Thank you. To make decisions without coming into the mind of Christ is to set a death trap for your life. Write it down. To make decisions without surrendering your decisions unto Christ is to set a death trap for your life. Remember, he's the head. How would Christ feel? What would Holy Spirit sense? What will it do with Holy Spirit in the decision that you make towards your brother and sister? I know you love Jesus. I know you love Holy Spirit. I know you love God. You would never do anything to frustrate the Lord. But then he's grieved when you are not fair with your brother or sister. Regardless how they respond to you, remember, your decision must always be to please him. Don't be headless anymore. God bless you. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. God. In saying that, so let's remember that we must have the relationship and this is talking about the apostolic relationship yes. where the fathers and the sons are back together once again, because we, we can see in the Bible how Cornelius needed Peter, mm -hmm. how Onesimus needed Paul, yes. how Paul needed Barnabas, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Uh, not to forget how that. Apollos needed Priscilla and Anna Aquila. Quilla. I just thought I'd throw that in since this is National Women's Month. What you say? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen. Thank you, Who Jesus. Who did Samir need? A pot, Samir needed John and Peter. Woo! John and Peter. Yes. Glory to God. So we have to stop cutting ourselves off. Mm -hmm. And you hear me saying that I apostolic yes. but that that goes in the household of faith where we have pastors where we have bishops mm -hmm. you know if you're to report to them because of your absence you got to do that you can't you can't say he's not my daddy uh -huh. no he's the bishop and watchman over your soul and he must watch and pray over you joyfully joyfully there's always a head there's always someone Glory that you God. should be accountable to in your lives, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to, I can hear somebody say, he's not my husband. No, your pastor's not your husband, but he is the bishop and watchman over your soul. And if your life is in order, your husband is there too and over your husband's soul. My Hallelujah. God. And my if your God. husband is unsaved, you should be able to go to your man to God and say, can we pray? Or my would you God. pray with me concerning my husband? Glory to God, yours apostle. But I just want to encourage you to keep yes. the relationship, yes. to yes. keep the relationship vertically mm -hmm. with our heavenly father so that we can keep the relationship horizontally with our earthly fathers. I want to say something unique to this ministry. Thank you. Fortify your relationship. <laughs> Fortify the ministry that God is giving you. Yes. Exalt Christ in the ministry that God is giving you and you will see breakthroughs. Ah, you will see the grace of God. God put his grace upon those who synergize with authority. Remember, yes, I am grown. I said it plenty of times. I had to serve and I still serve. I still have to go and say, and, and, and you know, it's almost like, really, I got to do? And my wife said, come on, honey. I said, man, I don't want to hear that rascal. Yeah, I said, call my own pastor a few times, a rascal. Man, I ain't got time. Look, at, you know, look at, he's running late, so why can't I run late? You know, just total disrespect. You know, he's sleeping, all that. Uh, you know, we say little crazy stuff like that, but we don't understand authority. We, we have to begin to understand authority. One, I want to give, I can go about 10 examples in the scripture by authority, but for the sake of time, please have mercy on me. I just want to use this one right here. And the satyrian came to him and said, Lord, you're not even worthy to come to my home. 
So the Saturian understood the, the, the power of authority, not just authority, but he understood to the place where he honored the Lord and said, Lord, you're not, I'm not worthy for you to come to my home. And then the, the Lord looked at him and said, wow, what great faith. And so it wasn't just the faith, it was the understanding he had concerning authority. And, it's, and he said to, what did he say to the Lord? He said, all you have to do is speak the word and my servant shall be made whole. There was a woman who understood authority and she said, okay, man of God, according to your word, so be it. And the meal never stopped running. She, she and her son did not die mm -hmm. because they understood authority. So when we begin to understand authority, even if we don't understand it, but if we will submit to what God has connected us to, the most important thing is to make sure you connect to who God has connected you. Yeah. Ah, yes, you could have been with Benny Hinn. Yes, you could have been with John G. Lake. Yes, you could have been with, come on. You could have been with, yes, those who, but that's not who God planted you with. There's a reason. Because I truly believe this with all my heart. Glory to God. Every person must answer the first call. And your first call is where God calls you into the place of seeking him. In your seeking, God begins to plant men and women of God. And they don't have to have a name that's going to be there to help catapult you in the purpose of what God has designed for you. You won't get it by yourself. You won't get it by being isolated. You won't get it by being stubborn. Ah, I sent some Yea, I will give you the desires of your heart because you have said within your heart that I desire to please my father God. I desire to please the Lord. And I and I shall renew and I shall restore even that what the enemy thought he has shaved off you and that what the enemy has positioned you in your mind. Yea, I shall transform, said the spirit of God, because because you shall see the manifestation, my God, of my glory. My God, I just sense the wind of God right yes, now. And, yes. and I want to thank you all for hearing you, and Lord. giving us a few moments of your time. You're, listen, you're more precious to me right now, glory to God, than the skin on my body. So I thank Father, Daddy. I thank Holy Spirit. God, if I'm unjust, speak to their hearts. Illuminate your word. Lord, they don't have to see us. Hallelujah. But let them see you. Let them have an encounter with you. Clothe them again, Father. Let them not live with leaves on, but let them live with your glory resting upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. 45. Let God use you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Miracles are easy. Hallelujah. I'm going to I'm going to give it pass it off to my wife um, in one second, but I just had to say this. Um, I told you so. What a word from God! What a word from God! And I want you I want you to understand this. You cannot be fortified. Your life cannot be fortified unless you place things in the order that God has them to be placed in. This 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 ministry was founded upon the this this same exact message was founded upon this message. When we first started this ministry, God said, go out and get some elders, get some men and women and place them around you and above you, place them above you. One of the first people I called was the Fashaws and asked them to be a part of the board and a part of the, the founding fathers or the founding members of this church and to be a, be a overwatch and an oversee to this thing. The next people I called was Pastor Steve and so forth and so on, and, and, and some other uh, elders in the church. This church is founded off of that. So if you want to be a part of uh, kingdom, you want to be a part of the fortification and being fortified, you must be a part of submissiveness. You must be a part of having a head and having leadership above you. Never serve a leader who doesn't have a leader. Never serve a pastor who doesn't have a pastor. Never serve an apostle who does not submit to an apostle. 
These, this is the order of God. This is the things that God has placed in front of us. And we understand it. And that's why we submit ourselves to these men and women of God. And we submit ourselves to uh, who God has placed in front of us and, and before us. And I think Stephanie said it in the group chat, where God has placed me, that's where I need to be. And that's who I need to be under, where God has placed me. I don't want to be anywhere but where God has placed me. If you find yourself outside of where God has placed you, you find yourself in a curse. And it's just that simple. Anywhere outside of where God has placed you and who God has placed you and, and, and who God has placed you under, there is a curse that is attached because God will always have his hand upon the people that he puts in, in upon you. If that makes any sense, I'm going to pass it off to my wife. That word was amazing. Thank you so much, Fast Shores. I love you both. God bless you for, for blessing us. Thank you for being uh, a part of this team, a part of this family. We love you. Uh, you, you rock my socks off today and I love it. And I will, I will continue to submit unto you both. Uh, and, and I love you both. Thank you. We love you, Pastor Camille. Pastor Glory Shirley. to God. God has great Thank things you, for you all. That's Hallelujah. all. I, that's all I'm gonna say Thank right you, now. But God is He's going to fortify and He's going to solidify and He's going Amen. to glorify. Hallelujah. Amen. There, I, I just want to say this real quick. Their cash app is inside the group chat. It, it's inside the chat. So if you feel led to send them uh, a love offering, please do so. And I'm going. Where's my beautiful wife at? Let me scroll this thing. I'm going to pass it off to my wife. There she, oh, there she is. Go ahead, baby. Oh, the fashions. I have to say, Apostle, you didn't make me laugh today because you was all up on my toes. All up on my toes. Can I just be transparent? Because this is a transparent place. But I am that isolative person. I'm the one that like gets caught up in doing work and getting stuff done and making sure everything looks good and does not submit. I I am I am very much that person. And not like I don't submit. Like if somebody speaks into me, I'm just, I'm like I'm submitted, right? But I don't look for that accountability. And you were all up on my toes today. I was like, Lord, I repent. I am not a Moabite. <laughs> I am not a Moabite. <laughs> um, so I just appreciate you guys for coming with that word. Um, if you guys don't know, but I met the, um, the Fashaws a couple of years ago when I went to Florida to speak at Shekinah's conference and they prophesied over me. Um, and one of the prophecies that came forth while we were there was that I, we would have a church, which at the time I was like, no, we won't. Um, <laughs> you ain't my daddy, <laughs> no, something. Um, but the other thing was that Ramel would read the word and it would, he would have a fresh revelation that would come out of it. And, and, um, and uh, Apostle Fashaw, he, he was prophesying over me and he whispered into my ear, you will enjoy your husband again. And I have to say the last two to three years, the last two years of our marriage have been the best two years of our marriage. So he is definitely, they are people of God, you know, and you always know, you know what, you know, the Bible tells us that you can tell who are the people of God by their seed, right? And like, I mean, don't get better than Shekinah. Don't tell Justin. I'm Jordan, but don't tell Jordan, but it don't get better than Shekinah. I might send them Jordan so they could raise him next. Um, but um, they always make us laugh. So we owe you some more up, Sarah. Thank you for just coming and blessing us and just being real with us. And we just love you. Um, I will just say that the church will be sowing a seed into them, but we open it up so that you guys can definitely personally sow a seed. Um, Cause this is the type of word that you do want to sow a seed into cause you want to reap your own harvest. Um, and I just want to open up the floor for just a couple of minutes. If anyone wants to share anything, um, in response to the message. I saw Tanya taking a bunch of notes. I had to turn off my camera because I'm like, all they're gonna see is me staring down. Like, what's the point of having me on camera? I got so many notes. All right, I'm gonna take the silence or the unmuting. You're doing my notes, hold on. Oh, 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 sorry. Get them, Tanya, get them. Um, 
first of all, I learned a lot about the Moabites. Nobody had ever, I've never heard it broken down that way. Um, and it was, it was real for me. Um, I think the prophetess for sharing about not having a father in her life and just talking about what father that really resonated with me. Um, and I want to hear, I'm going to study these notes because I wrote down the independent spirit where there is not a father son relationship and that the curse is active. Um, and then I wrote down when you take offense, the hand of God lifts and you are susceptible to the curse. That was really, that was really, really good there too. Thank you so much for that word. Yeah, I, me too, Tanya. So like when, when prophetess said that she didn't have a dad and then the connection between the two, and I've been the prodigal way too many times, right? Like just the connection between all of those things, it, it got me thinking like, is it that root, right? Is it that root of like not having a dad to not ever really having to submit that leaves this residue that you have to sort of like overcome um, the, you know, with the blood of the lamb, basically, because what else is going to get rid of that? I don't know um, about growing up with the father, but I can say that I was in my eighth month of pregnancy and I met my dad. He passed a year and a half later. He got a chance to hold Shekinah, but the most important thing is I got the opportunity to lead him to the Lord. And that was such a relationship to where it was like he was never missing. He explained that your grandmother told me to go on. She'll take care of you. I said, she told me. He said, did she really? I said, yes, she told me. And at this time, yeah, my grandmother was still living. But uh, I just said to say that I got an opportunity to lead him to the Lord. And I was 30, almost 36 years old when I met him. Praise God. Praise God. So as you guys know, anyone else have anything to share? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just wanted to say that was a good word. Um, wow. I'm like sitting right here, right across from them. So <laughs> I get to see a lot. <laughs> but, um, you know, God is so good because I really needed to hear this. And I met my father later in my life as well, but I didn't know his name. I didn't know anything about him. So I think that when it came to, especially men in particular, um, kind of correcting things or being <laughs> over my life, it's really been, it's kind of been a struggle, you know, because I, I was like, mm, you know, you're not going to tell me what to do. But at the same time, I love how you broke down just the Moabites and what that meant. I don't think I ever really knew what that meant either. Um, but one of the things that stuck out to me was to make a decision without surrendering your decisions will create a death trap. And that, that was like, wow, because there's so many times I can think about where I just like, quickly made a decision. And then I think back, I'm like, did I even consult God about that? Did I even consult someone else before me that was older than me, or maybe had more wisdom than me to see what God wanted me to do in that situation. But instead I just took it upon myself to do it myself and do what I wanted to do. So thank you for the word. God is good. Oh, and I'm definitely going to stand on accountability and be more cognizant of it too. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Amen. Oh, like that's, you know, I mean, I, you know, I ain't going to tell you what to do, prophetess, but I feel like that in, in a possible, I do feel like that's a whole woman's conference right there. And I know that men also, right? But I think for women who grew up without a dad, it's especially needed because women need that daddy figure, right? And so to see God as your daddy, to have that opportunity to experience him in that way is a gift that many of us, because we never had it growing up, are missing even as adults, even in our relationship with, with Christ, with God. Anyone else want to add anything? I feel like yeah. we've been here forever. <laughs> And I'm, 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 I'm coming into agreement with the conference. 
because he's taking it from the other perspective of um, being a mother who grew up without a father, raising children without a father. And what does that mean? Um, because I knew my father, but I knew what my mother said about my father. I didn't really know my father. And it wasn't until my father passed away that I got to understand that my father was so much more than what my mother had told me. So, um, and that affected the way I related to males and to my husband. And so, yes, yes. Anyway, let me get off of here because they know I'll start asking questions and talking too much. So let me help. Listen, I have a question. Where did, where, I want to ask everyone this. When you read that he took his own son, he's the king, King Morbite, mm -hmm. but he took his own son to sacrifice his son for blood. And, uh, and it didn't work anyhow, but he took his son, he sacrificed his own son. He killed his own son to sacrifice into a demonic spirit mm. for, for principalities to come to try to help him destroy the other army. You can't, did that ring in anyone's mind? I'm like, so today are, we have people today who will sacrifice their children, not to that magnitude, but to another degree of level. And, and we have to, you know, I don't know when I read that and I was looking at that and I pondered over it, so much came to me and so much revelations, what I wanted to give insight to because I thought about dejection, rejection and, and the sons today and the daughters today, how they believe that their parents have betrayed them in a sense, have given themselves and just have thrown them away. That's like he took his son and just threw him away to the side. Mm. And so I thought about that today. I don't know. I just, I'm going to do a little bit more research on that puzzle there. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Study more apostles. Study more. Yes. I want to hear <laughs> the revelation. <laughs> I think with, um, with, with that woman's conference, I think there needs to be uh, a continuation of that in a father's heart conference to add to that. Uh, because father's heart is something that myself and my wife went through a few times and also taught there. And I think that is just so important because uh, the true father's heart is not a selfish heart. It is a selfless heart. And I think that that's what the apostle is, is saying, that he was willing to give up his son be, uh, because of selfishness. And that is the heart of the enemy. The heart of the enemy is only for the heart of the enemy, only for himself. And I think that when you start to get into the father's heart and what the father's heart really means, it's the, it's the heart that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten, begotten son for the world. And I think that we have to understand that it is not to, it is not to, to receive, but it's to give. And I think that's what the father's heart is. And I think that we need to really have a conference wrapped around that. This is so good, man. We can go on and on for days with this because we all can find ourselves and look ourselves in the mirror at some point in this conversation and say, this is, this is something that I definitely need to submit to. Uh, so again, thank y'all for the word. I'm, I'm a, I got like seven messages out of this for myself and for others. So Amen. thank y'all. Thank you all. all right. You know, it makes me think, and, I, and I, we're going to wrap it up here, I promise, but it makes me think of like what practical ways people sacrifice their kids today, right? And like you could look to Hollywood and see all these kids. You could look at Will Smith and Jada Pinkett kids and be like, mm, right? But then, and, and that was my immediate reaction, but then it made me think of like when my parents were getting divorced, my dad had to pay my mom a bunch of money because they, my, they had a business together. And my mom said, I don't want your money. Just give me my kids and let me go. And he was happy to give her her kids and let her go and never give her her money. He was happy. And it just made me think of like, it's so easy for us to think of like Hollywood or all these other places of how they sacrifice their kids. And we don't realize just how, 
how the average person will sacrifice their kids, whether they pursue a career and forget about their kids or pursue this and forget about their kids. So um, yeah, as you dissect what we took, what we took in today, just kind of like search you, right? Like search your experience, search your childhood, search your family history, right? Like the stories that you've heard rather than look outside. Um, and I feel like it's with our lives today, uh, I know that I tell my son, he has two daughters. I say, be careful how you treat your daughters. That's all I can say. Love them, treat them like little ladies, because you will want their remembrance of you as their dad to be positive, to be good. Because I didn't have a childhood memory of my father. Mm. I met him at 35. I saw him at age 11. I got $11. I remember that. But I really met my, my dad at, when I was almost 36 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm sold out on no matter what take place in this earth, if the father's hearts are not turned back to the sons and the sons and daughters are not turned back to the father, yes. the earth, entire earth will be cursed. cursed. No matter what they do, no matter what technology they bring forth, it will produce to nothing. So this is the doors we have to begin to open yes. in the hearts and minds of people. We got to really change. I can't love. I can't love my brother across the street if I don't know how to love my own child. Amen. Can I get delivered? Help me, Jesus. Woo! All right. Uh, I'm going to let's go pray. ahead. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, let's pray. Glory to God. You, Father, we are just so grateful, God. We're so grateful. We're grateful that you just took over this place, Lord God, and that you brought a word that was so necessary in this atmosphere. We're even grateful for this recording so we could continue to Amen. just listen to what you brought forth. We bless Kendra and her beautiful spirit, Lord God. We bless her. We just speak life into her ministry. We plead the blood of Jesus over her marriage, her future spouse, the person that she will build a life with, Lord God. We just plead the blood of Jesus over her. We know and believe, Lord, that you have a plan and a pur purpose for her, Lord God. And we just thank you for that, Lord God. And thank you for just allowing us to experience her today. We bless the fascists, God. We thank you for just their heart, which is your heart. That's truly it. Their heart, Father God. We just thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for who they are, for their commitment unto you, Lord God, and for their the, the seeds that fall off of them. Because literally, they fall off like a, sh like a tree being shaken. They just fall off of them onto us. And we just thank you, God, that we get to be like Ruth and follow behind and pick up those scraps. We thank you for that, God. We just bless them and thank you for their lives, Lord God. And we bless each and every one of the folks here. We pray, Lord God, that today as they set their foot forward, um, they would just see your heart. They would experience your your true heart for them, the, the, the daddy heart that you have for them, Lord God. And we thank you for just opening us up, Lord God, to reveal those places in our hearts that have been wounded, that are, are feeling lost or alone. Thank you for revealing them, Lord God, and for pouring your loving kindness onto them. We bless you and honor you today. And we seal this service in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you to the Fashions. Thank you. Thank you. God. God Thank bless you, God. Jesus. Love you, Shirley. Hallelujah. See you one day this week. Yes, please. Hello. Bye. Bye. Bye.